Welcome to Autocross. And the name of the game, in case you aren't familiar with Autocross for whatever reason, the name of the game is to take pretty much any car you want around a series of very complex and technical courses in parking lots, or in this case, a proper oval racing track. And yeah, have fun with your friends, compete against each other, see who's got the fastest car slash the, be slash the best driver. And yeah, that's really the primary objective, have fun. Um, don't hit any cones though, because you will get a one second penalty for every cone you hit. And, well, as I said earlier, as you can see here, we got Mercedes going mad. You can take any car you want. Which means I could go and compete. But before I did, I thought I would share a little bit of detail about the car that I would be using for my autocross run. But first, we should probably talk about the car I'm driving. This is a 2010 Ford Fusion SE. Now, SE stands for, I think, Standard Edition? I actually don't know what it means, but it means something. Something is mean by that, and... Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a nice vehicle, I think, to start off with. It did just get passed by a Jeep, but whatever. Um, the engine is where it really shines, though. You see, this is a mid-sized family sedan nothing to shout at, and yet this version has a 3 liter V6 engine, not a turbocharger in sight, and yet it makes 240 brake horsepower and 210 pound-speed of torque. This is a quick car, that's only 10 horsepower less than the Focus ST. It's 40 more horsepower than the Fiesta ST. And it only weighs 3,200 pounds. For a four-door sedan, that's not designed to be, you know, lightweight, carbon fiber bits anywhere, that's very light. Which means it has a power-to-weight ratio better than a Mazda MX-5. For your information. Oh, and did I mention the 0 to 60 time? 7.1 seconds. I know, I know. That's not, oh, that's not super crazy. However... That's also not terrible. Zero to 60 in seven seconds. That's, again, that's right in line with the Fiesta ST, the high performance version of a car weighing just 2,500 pounds. So, this is, a, this is actually a pretty quick car, especially for a first car like mine. But my favorite thing about this isn't the weight, it's not the engine, it's not, it's surprisingly good statistics, it's the gearbox. The gearbox I love. You see, having driven modern Fords, or brand new 2019-2020 model, for quite some time now, I don't like the way they change gear. In those cars, first off, they got rid of the, the shifter, so it's just buttons. I don't like buttons. Buttons are irritating, okay? They're very irritating, and they really won't push my buttons. Yeah, that was a bad one, sorry. Um, this one, though. This is an older gearbox. From about 2010, this one. Because the car was from May in 2010. And that means it actually shifts when you want it to shift. It's, yes, it's an automatic, but it shifts pretty much at the red line. And that's a really nice thing, a really welcome thing for all these new cars. Having a car that shifts at the red line it's, it's a gift. It is a wonderful gift. Which means you can use every molecule of power that you are given. Mm -hmm. 
Now, like every vehicle, there are downsides to this particular one. Chief among which is, um, well, that front left corner there. It, 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 I hit a speed bump, not, not a speed bump, a, a pothole, basically a speed bump, at 70 miles an hour. And it absolutely killed my front left suspension. Yeah, not, not ideal. Um, another thing of issue with this vehicle, just is an everyday thing, the wind noise, quite high. There's a lot of wind noise in case you haven't heard. <laughs> Um, so, that's not ideal when you're trying to have a conversation or when you're trying to talk to a camera. Having a lot of decibels is generally irritating. And this with all the windows rolled up. I can only imagine it with all the windows rolled down. So, yeah. But with that being said, it is now time to learn the course that we're going to be driving on. Okay, right, you got all that? Completely understood every apex? Alright, good. Now all we have left to do is take our place in the start line. Oh, we've ha we have a roadmaster. The roadmaster is not a master of this road, let me tell you that. We have not one, but two roadmasters. One of them's currently going around the track. Um, he's not doing too bad, actually. Uh, we have another one coming up behind us. That's going to be interesting. Bow the barge is right here. There goes the BRZ. We got one, a few more cars ahead of us, and then we are ready to hopefully not get lost. That's the goal. Our only goal right now, not get lost. We don't want a James May Award going to us. We've already had that happen before. Not that my fellow competitors were giving me large amounts of confidence, shall we say. I was still eagerly awaiting my chance to go as I lined up in front of the start line. Alright, we're lining up, lining up. And now we wait. We have a Pontiac, looks like a G8 going up ahead. Here we go. We got this. Nice and easy, through the box, down brakes, floor it, into the chicane. There we go. Nice and easy, where are we going, where are we going, this way. Nice and easy, not too much, not too much break. Lock it up, we're good. There we go. Ooh. I have no idea if I hit anything, I think we're good. Ooh. Okay. That was something. Ooh. I I I uh, I might oh I hit a cone. No! No, I hit something, I think. Ah, oh, bugger. I pushed it. I pushed it a lot. Alright. That was not the best run, I will be honest. Well, okay. Good job. The Pontiac has spun out. He's on the grass. He's still spun out. There we go. And, uh... 
across the line. Good job. Aside from the Pontiac's incompetence, I lined up behind yet another Pontiac, strangely enough. And then I decide to ask a bit of a question. So how many cones did I hit last time? Oh really? Cool. I thought I did. I saw people picking them up. Sweet. Yay. Let's do this. The day wore on as more and more interesting vehicles continue to lap the track, whether it be BMW Estates or very interesting Volkswagens, which have a party piece of tripoding. Yeah, it's not very noticeable, you would think, but when you lift the wheel up that much in the air, it is kind of obvious. It's very cool, especially when you're um, doing some sideways action. It's also surprisingly quick, provides you don't kidnap a cone. Um, he definitely DNF this run, all right? Even when it tripod, it still doesn't kick the cone in. Yeah, he definitely got a few seconds off for this run. But other than that, it's a scary fast car, but not as scary fast as the Japanese. Turns out in this competition, if you wanted to go very quickly, very reliably, you gotta get a Japanese car. I mean, one of the standouts here was a hot was an Acura Integra. Um, I don't think it was the um, Type R Integra, partially because it's very modified and people generally don't like to modify the Type R's too much because they're a lot more valuable these days. But they're, they, the Japanese cars these days were flying like maniacs. Even the unreliable rotary RX-8 was getting in on the action, although it didn't do an official time walk. But then, it was my turn once again, as the afternoon came into fruition. Okay, update. It is now the afternoon, it is time for heat number two for section B, which is what I'm in. So I have four runs, once again, and uh, hopefully this goes well. I don't know how I did so good on my first attempt. I I was running in the 57s, the first half, and then I think with my second or third run, I did a 55.7. I don't know how that's possible. It was some two seconds faster than my previous attempt, but yeah, I, I did a 55. <laughs> so that's my target now. We shall see if it's possible to beat that. This is going to be interesting, because I'm, I'm already not last, but it's good. I beat the 46 horsepower Volkswagen Golf. That is a good thing. And I think I beat the Toyota Corolla as well. So, we shall wait and see, really, how this fares. This is going to be interesting. I think, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to get any more speed out of it. I guess just being smooth as hell. Um, it, it's, it, I'm... I'm at a loss. I don't know how I did a a um a 55.7. That boggles my mind that I was able to do that. But here we are. Um, so we're just gonna try and go faster than that. Really, that's the only objective now. So I started to use some sneaky tactics. I'm being very clever right now. You can probably hear the air conditioning is on full blast. And by air conditioning, I mean heat. Gonna help cool my engine down. I mean, it's not bad right now, but you know, 
every little bit helps. And yeah, we're gonna get going. This is this is, this is the thinking. This is the thinking. The, the advanced. All right. Yeah. This is what separates the uh, amateurs from the professionals. Doesn't sound like it, but it, it, I swear that's what it is. All right, we're gonna try and nail it off the launch. Ready? Bang! We're gonna be off without wheel spin. All right, that's our goal. We're gonna try and not get any wheel spin, and then we'll be good. Didn't work. I got wheel spin, not much though. Break at the tire. Yeah, chuck it in, lift off. I must say the handling on this vehicle, for being a decade old, is not bad. I have more or less rather good confidence. I know that's nothing to shout at. Moderately good confidence, but in a vehicle this old and this out of place on an autocross stage, it's rather impressive, really. I find it very satisfying taking this vehicle around and just finding the apex. Finding the apex and not exceeding it. Like that. That is glorious fun. Glorious! I mean, seriously. <laughs> that is proper fun. And this thing... This thing does a pretty darn good job, if I do say so myself. This is, for being, you know, a 30, 300 pound four-door sedan, that's front-wheel drive, I th I'm very impressed with it. I'm very impressed with how the Fusion is handling this. So, uh, on. I for USB, so if anybody has oh, I've got four -wheel drive. <laughs> However, as the day wore on, it quickly became apparent that my efforts weren't working. And I had one more chance to go faster than the It may not have been that bad, it still wasn't quite enough to improve upon a 55.7 being three hundredths of a second slower. Mustang, you know, 45.5. That would be the overall victor out of all the vehicles here. A mighty impressive showing from the Stang. However, there 
there was one more thing I wanted to try out. You see, the Buick Roadmaster was offering people to ride inside the car when it was going along, and I couldn't pass up that opportunity, and I do apologize in advance. I think that Buick Roadmaster sums up the ID principle of autocross very nicely. It's not about setting the overall fastest pace. Sure, that's the main objective in theory, but when you're actually there, the most important thing is having fun with your friends, messing about, going absolutely ballistically sideways in a 5,000 pound land, you know, this 5.7 liter V8, you know? And that's the beauty of autocross. The times don't really matter, as long as you're having fun.